Good evening, Julian. <laughs> good evening, Mike. And good evening to everybody listening and watching, and welcome to another episode of Veterinary Ramblings. My name is Mike Brampton. And my name is Julian Hood. Ah, oh, Veterinary Ramblings, Series 3. God, how did it ever get that old, eh? Series 3. Absolutely, absolutely. Do you realise we have got no listeners from Antarctica? Have we not? Not no. even one? No, not even one. I appreciate that the population of Antarctica is mildly more than 200. There's a few more, aren't there? Now, are we including penguins? No. Or nuns, because they look similar from a distance. They, they, they do indeed, but I, I'm not aware that penguins have got logins for Spotify or Apple iTunes or any of the, the formats that we go out on. And I, I do know... Nuns do either, in all fairness. Well, probably not. And I do know that they're not allowed on Facebook or YouTube, which, of course, are all channels that you can get hold of the next episode of Veteran Ramblings. You can. I did hear that one of my colleagues from, I think it was one of the zoos in America the other day, told me that he stopped one of the emperor penguins from logging on to our website, which, of course, is veterinaryramblings.com. And I, I asked him why, and... Yeah. Something about parental guidance or something like that. I, I don't know. Well, this is this is a difficulty really um, with, with penguins. I think parental guidance is so difficult to obtain. Right. Okay. Get, getting them to sign any sort of release uh, is, is hard. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Brampton, and my name is Julian Ho. Welcome to Veterinary Ramblings. So tonight's guest. Tonight's, tonight's guest. guest. I don't know what she knows about penguins. Perhaps we should ask her. Let's ask her. We should ask her. I, I do know, I do know, um, she, long, long time ago, set up the first cat-only clinic. The Vancouver, very first? Hmm. In Vancouver, in Canada. And uh, she now travels the world, or used to before COVID, travel the world, lecturing um, on all things feline. Our special guest tonight is a lady very dear to my heart, um, somebody who has put herself through the mill on my behalf and on Cats Protection behalf when she joined me on the charity ride called Tour de Vet 2. When did you do Tour de Vet 2? Tour de Vet was quite a long time ago. I'm arguing you'll probably be able to tell you more about that tonight because it's, a lot of it's sort of lost in, in the sort of distant memory. I think it was probably about five or six years ago. I'm really looking forward to meeting Margie because you told me so much about her over the years. Okay. Well, she's here. Let's get Great. her in. Let's get her in. Let's get her in. Let's get her in. Here's Margie. Here's Margie. Hello, Margie. Hello. I'm just getting all my tunes out. Wow. Oh, now, that's what? amazing. How Isn't that fantastic? Is that? So, yeah. How many of those are you going to drink today then, Margie? Zippo. Because uh, it's new in here. Love this. I know you like really like this one too. Oh, I like that one. That's a special Ooh. one. That is. Yeah, that's a lovely, lovely one. I still haven't tried uh, Ryan Reynolds. That's one of my other. But big I don't that. Good yeah. stuff, aviation yeah. gents. Yes. You're going. You're going through my top ten of gyms here, by the way. Yeah, there you go. And Henrix, you also can never go wrong with, of course. Oh yes, absolutely. We do yeah. like Hendrix. Yeah, the lovely. listeners and viewers that know me quite well, you will all appreciate that there's probably one thing in common with a lot of the gins that I drink, and that is that they've got seaweed, or seem to be some have nautical nautical flavours or a nautical theme to them. And that's no different tonight because tonight I'm on the uh, Shetland Reel, which is a Scottish gin from the Shetland Isles. Um, although that one's tinged with um, with some orange. What, what, what have you got then tonight, then, Julian? Well, I've got I've got a new one that I got uh, from from Naked Wines. This is my uh, my uh, half yearly freebie from Naked Wines, and it's right. actually Nativo from Chile. And I opened it about twenty minutes ago, and the initial flavour was quite refreshing, really quite light, a little bit of um, of a sort of herby. Uh, flavour to it, mm -hmm. but quite crisp. 20 minutes on, I have to describe it as nasty, so I'm going to go and get another one. It's rotten stuff. Ugh. 
yes, I can confirm that. It's not at all nice. I'll be right back. I'll probably enjoy oh. it later. I had a bit. Oh, okay. Off you go then. Some more over there. You carry on. <laughs> what a magnificently handsome ginger cat you have there. That's a nice collar. So do you know what the collar is? It's a buster collar, is it? Has he had some surgery? Well, it's, not, it's not. It's a bird's be safe collar. Oh, um, yeah. And what it is, it's got reflector on it, and it's simply a scrunchie on a breakaway collar. Right. And what it what it does, they're they're very colorful, and they were developed in Australia because of, of course, the decimation of um, unique indigenous species there. But they um, uh, they are really really good at. He's an extremely good hunter, and as long as he's wearing this, which is all the time, he's mm. he is unsuccessful at catching birds oh, because really? the birds. Yeah. Birds respond to color more than they do to like color and movement more right. than they do sounds. As we all know, bells don't work worth a diddle. Um, a bell in your cat doesn't make any difference, but the collars really, really help. So, yeah. What a great thing! A, a, a bird, bird, be seen. Bird, birds, be seen. birds be safe. Birds be safe. Birds be safe. They are, um, and there are a couple of studies, uh, independently done studies that have proven a you know decrease of something like. 87% of, of success rate in kill. Wow, that's that's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Superb. So, so you yeah. say that comes from Australia? Well, that's where it was developed. And now, of course, I mean, you can get them on Amazon or whatever, but yeah. I think other other retailers are available. Although are, they won't be for much longer, the way that Amazon is buying over the world. You've lectured feline medicine all over the world. Have you ever lectured in India? I've not been to India. It's a, it's a place I would I, I would like to go, but I'm also torn because, um, again, my, through empathy with the the seeing the street people and the beggars, I think that would really be very difficult. Um, and also understanding that it, that it's a whole system is set up where people are may be maimed it's essentially it's prostitution but through you know beggaring it's uh, um uh, they're maimed purposefully aren't they to uh, to increase they, their they chance may be, they may be but regardless of, of of whether they were maimed purposely or not they, there's essentially a a, a a a pimp that they have to give all of their earnings to so that's a that's a horrible thing and then the other thing is simply being a, a having a germanic background i uh cannot stand inefficiency and the so i think that that would be that would push a lot of a lot of uh, my buttons and a very high need for for uh, good hygiene i also have a something that's happened as i've gotten older is my sense of smell has gotten more and more acute and it, it can it can be really troublesome yeah but i do i do love uh i mean thailand and and uh i've been to china eight times i've you know been to japan at least more than eight times Australia, Peru, Venezuela, uh, Brazil, Argentina, uh, Mexico, uh, of course, Puerto, uh, uh, Puerto Rico only virtually. So I've yeah, been been lots of lots of places, yeah. but I've not been to India. You say, uh, you say you've been to Puerto Rico virtually? Yeah, only virtually because uh, because uh, well because of COVID. Because I'm you know very very fortunate I've, to be invited to all these all these places, and so. Switzerland and Germany, I was just in virtually, Puerto Rico virtually, Mexico virtually. I'm doing AFP meeting, something with Bulgaria, um, also virtually, um, lot, you know, lots of, lots of virtual traveling. So, so how does that work? Because you, you thrive off a live audience. I've, I've had the privilege of working with you a number of times. And you, you thrive on that interreaction, that personal interaction with your audience. Well, so what I what I do is, is I have a standing screen? standing desk, right? So a standing desk, which means that I can at least move around and still gesticulate and and not be so staid and and forced. So that helps. Wow, that's that's a neat idea. Amazing, yeah. great yeah. idea. I like that. So I, that, I need to try this actually. Really, because I think I think the the, the biggest problem with with coronavirus, the biggest problem with the whole pandemic, has been. Not social distancing, but social isolation. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's it's, yeah, it's the socialization exactly. And the, the the term social distancing is bull. It's it's physical distancing, and, yeah. and it's that's really important that people make that distinction because otherwise people don't 
get the, that they need to actually be six meters apart and mm. or more or pardon me two meters apart or, or more but then also it means that you're, you're right because otherwise it means to be within five inches of someone but be rather curt to them yeah yeah the term social distancing is nonsense yeah and so physical physical distancing and then i think that what's what's the it's so so hard this not being able to you know shake hands or hug somebody and that is that's really and and now it's no longer hard which bothers me that it's you know become sort of can't high five somebody it's just kind of high five the air yeah, the whole elbow, yeah. yeah. The whole elbow, the whole elbow thing is touching. That's stupid because that's not far enough apart. So I don't know yeah. why anybody ever came up with that. It's, it's really changes the dynamic, doesn't it, Margaret? Yeah. It helps, right? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. All I've got is is rattling now. There's a lot of rattling. Silly, silly man. Um. So yeah, no, I think that I think that standing thing, this whole yeah, it really helps. It's very freeing. Oh, okay. there you go. Now it's you need to it. Yeah, put it away. I like that. That's good. Nice. Okay. Yeah, it works. Now you need to lift up your. <laughs> oh, yeah. not even go there. I mean, you've got a very lovely shirt there, and um, it's my shirt, isn't it? It's a nice shirt. It's, it's good shirt. Floral and blues and yellows and very nice. And that, that of course, Margie, is how you would know Julian if you'd actually met him. So, mm. yeah, we... speaking of which, uh, it was when we when we were in um, South Africa uh, in October and and had the uh, for me it was the second time for for Jim it was the first time oh. the opportunity to go on 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 safari. Um, and one of the things that they they do, which of course was incredible. Um, one of the things that, like the vehicles they they use, um, it's a Toyota something, but they they Land buy cruiser. them. Hmm? A Land Cruiser, I believe. So they buy them straight off of the, you know, they buy them new, and yep. then instead of just buying them bare bones, I don't know why, then they take literally, you know, take a take a, yep. a can opener to it and take all the top off, take and then put in extra seats and stuff, and so they essentially rebuild this thing. Why they don't just get them in an earlier stage of manufacture and build the stuff in? I don't know. It seems ridiculously wasteful. I think it's because to 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 stop a vehicle being built part way through is very expensive. You've got to stop the whole production line. But it's so it's nonetheless it's incredibly wasteful. It, it is. It you know, is. I mean, the problem with the process with the process that you know with the process yeah. of how we do things it's not yeah and of course we come up against this again and again throughout mm. life and it's just like that doesn't make any sense what do you you know yeah. buying yeah. something because you need a little bit of it but you can't get the little bit of it you have to buy the whole thing and then take the little bit out that kind of redundant that kind of wastefulness and the redundancy that we have in our in our society is just stupid horrific. You know, it, it's it's there on all levels i remember i i used to i went i did my first degree down in plymouth and wonderful place and I went to um, I went to Port Isaac one day up in the, the north of, of, of Devon, uh, and we wanted to buy some lobster uh, from the from the lobster fishermen. And they said, "Yeah, you know, we, we, sorry, we, we don't sell them to the public here." Uh, where, where, where do you sell them? They go off to the, the big restaurants. No, 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 we sell them to Spain, and the EC take all our lobsters off to Spain. And so I went to a supermarket, bought a lobster from there, and it had come from Spain. Yeah. So we were buying the same lobster back. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, that, that, that this this extra. If you've ever, if you haven't looked at it, it's it's really worth looking at the story of stuff. It's um, an animated uh, explanation. It's quite quite old now, but the story, the story of stuff, and how the when stuff. you buy an inexpensive. Um, inexpensive um well radio not that we don't use radios anymore but you buy an inexpensive mm, printer okay uh you it, it is the it's made obviously by um people who are underpaid you know poorly paid labor uh in unsafe working conditions then it is um shipped uh fuel costs etc cetera, etc cetera, docking costs etc cetera, etc cetera, or air airline um and so you've now got the, the the pollution and the you know all the 
all the extra effort and you buy it for much, 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 much less than it actually costs to make. And they're designed then to break down within a certain period of time. And so you have to buy more. And it's this, this, it's horrific. This waste is just horrific. It is, it is. And you know, we, we were part of it ourselves. We all are, we all are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. We, we bought, we bought a, a, a printer a couple of years back. Um, really quite cheap printer. It was, it was 30 pounds. Wow. And it came, it came with some some ink. Uh, the ink is more expensive than, than the printer was. Yeah. That's how uh, they do it because once you buy, once you've got their unit, you can. Mm. It, it's it's like some of the in clinic um, lab equipment, which I won't even go into. But that's which is a whole other thing. But you you are hooked into buying their supplies forever, and yeah. so that's where they make the money. But they do. Uh, they do. It's not but the then, initial investment. Yeah. T two years on, as you say, it broke this built-in obsolescence. Yeah, and so we phoned the helpline and said, you know, is there a part we can get? I can tell you exactly what's going on. No, no, it's got to, got to be replaced. So I thought, well, sod that. I'm not, I'm not yeah. getting the same brand of, of printer again. I get a different one. So I bought another one. We, we've put up with this one for, for five months. And it doesn't work. That's the problem with it. It doesn't work. So, you know, it, it, it'll print stuff. But actually... Uh, it's a wireless printer. You've got to go to the printer every time you want to print something, unplug it, plug it in again, reset it, and then it'll work. So it's not doing the job. So five months on, we're left with this dilemma. We've got a printer that we bought for another 30 quid. Do we get rid of it because it doesn't work and get another one for 30 pounds? And we then have this printer that's only five months old that no one really wants what can we do with it now the good news is one of our neighbors will take it and they have uh a setup where they just do everything wired rather than wireless mm -hmm. so you know as far as we're concerned great answer done but this is the society that we live in it yeah. was it's cheaper for us to buy another computer than to try and find a way of fixing this one yeah i have a, a, a wallet that i really uh uh, really like and it was you know it was needed a new zipper went to shoemaker have a new zipper put in he said you know that'll be thirty dollars why don't you just buy a new one it'll be less but because a i like this one b i don't want to be wasteful and c you're a, you're a shoemaker this is what you do why are you sending me to a shop instead of uh, being glad that i'm asking you to fix this it's just this it, it, it it's it's not enough to recycle, and as we're finding out, recycling is is actually quite a joke. Anyways, it's mm. you know it's making us feel good rather than anything else. Um, uh, but it's 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 reduce and reuse is is what we've got to do, and hence reduce. And one thing too with with COVID, I don't have as much stuff spoiling in the fridge because I'm being far more aware of. I go to the I go to the grocery shop less frequently and I'm far more selective, and I make sure I use what I buy, mm. and so that's good and, and hopefully that'll continue on in my mentality and my habits after yeah. hopefully I'm new habits so I, I i haven't um, i haven't bought a single loaf of bread since uh yeah, since bake it all. And, uh, i bake it all and, and um i'll show you some of my bread later but uh, I, I i love it i i spend uh well I, I i bake bread every other day but i spend one day a week pretty much only baking and, uh, mm -hmm. and cooking mm -hmm. Great. But as far as as far as repairing goes, I have a great sense of delight in being able to fix something. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the modern stuff is not user fixable. Yeah. Yes, Mike. Excuse me. Hmm. No, you're right. It's not user fixable. Um, but I took you're it. really good at fixing things, Mike. Mike is brilliant at fixing things. Thank you. I know. Well, I don't tell him he's brilliant, but you're really good at fixing things. <laughs> Thank you. I was very proud. Uh, and some of the some of our listeners and viewers will know that um, I, I have a company called Tennis Medical, and one of my products is a catch plug. And I was very proud really to be able to repair a 21 year old cat doppler last week. Well done! Oh wow, well, fantastic! What was what uh, was up with it? I, sorry, I have I have to say, I have to say that they they never go wrong. Yeah, it's a really it's a really good product. It's a really yeah, good product. brilliant. They're brilliant. You know, and then also enough, with, you know, enough, fixing, enough fixing the bikes. Mike's good. Mike's good at fixing bikes too. You know, enough yeah. of the product placement stuff. <laughs> but so, so what, what? What was wrong with it? So, uh, for for people who are unfamiliar, 
uh, a cat Doppler is uh, an amazing machine for actually measuring the blood pressure of cats and dogs and rabbits. And, um, fish. and fish and terrapins and you name it. And, and fish and terrapins, etc. cetera. Um, but you. we primarily use it for cats, dogs and rabbits in our practice. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it's brilliant. Absolutely wonderful piece, piece of equipment. The, the Doppler part uh, is, uh, is the method by which you detect whether there's a blood flow through an artery yeah. before you clamp it shut using the, um, using the pressure cuff. And, and so it, it then becomes a, a, an electronic stick and manometer. The cap Doppler, though, is a I, very... I so, say that word again. I can't say it again. I ran up to it the first time. Sphygma manometer. Sphygma manometer. I'll let Jin speaking for you. Sphygma manometer. Julian, I just want to say that's useful for what you described as useful to, to detect life. But what you're actually after when we're measuring blood pressure is as you relieve the pressure, at what point do you hear that blood flow again? That's, yes. your, that, that's yeah. in your systolic blood pressure. I, I, absolutely. And, and then when you get the, uh, the, the, the double pulse, then you can get the diastolic. Yeah. as well some people, um, people hear that better than others yeah some, some do. sorry yeah some people hear it others oh <laughs> <my job>. yeah <laughs> i i don't i don't quite know where to start the conversation here because I, I i've got fond memories do you do you remember margie you you joined me and raised a phenomenal amount of money for cats protection a few years ago where we we traveled around the country on our bicycles doing CPD. But do you, do you remember that practice where there were about 20 people in this very large pre prep room that they'd taken everything out of? So it was just the, the cabinets around the edge of the room. And uh, you gave a fabulous lecture on cat handling skills and they wanted to touch on blood pressure. And uh, we thought we'd got the audience sorted and they all sort of went, okay. Here you go, then. Sort out tiger's blood pressure. And uh, somebody came in holding at, at, at sort of arm's length a cat basket with this, with this cat basket that oh, was going, this that yes, was yes. going <laughs> even before. We'd, it wasn't just blood pressure. It was just it was it was it had to do with, you know, me doing an exam on this cat that people yeah. were. That's what, right. that it, very, very frightened, self-defensive cat. And That's it wasn't right. a problem at all. And then we did his blood pressure too. And yeah. it, it, it's like not a deal. And they, and they, they hopefully saw that, that getting, that you need to control your own reactions because Absolutely. our reactions are self-defensive too, yeah. in order to, uh, and, and just be consistent and make sure that you're giving signals that are not going to in, incur, in, in, increase the, level of fear but rather decrease it and that i think they were impressed that it that that oh. i could examine them completely you very calmly as i recall it you you lifted the lid and you very calmly wrapped this cat up and what you did was that you you sat on the floor which yeah and i put them i just put them between my legs and then they they feel like they're in a cozy and they relax yeah yeah that's right and then you know everybody was was stunned at this that that here was this this world renowned feline lecturer sitting on the floor, um, hold, holding this this cat gently between her legs, wrapped up in a in a blanket. And if I if I remember like the you, you squeezed a back leg out for me, or was it a tail? I can't remember. No, I would have used probably a back leg there. Yeah, I think you used a back yeah. leg, yeah. And, yeah. and we we took the cat's blood pressure yeah. and uh, popped it back in the basket. And I actually I carried him, not even put in his basket. I just carried him back to his bed. And I rearranged his bed. Yes, you did, didn't you? So that, yeah, and I wanted people to see how the the way a bed is set up is really important too, so yeah. that it can feel safe. And and you know, a towel hanging over half of the cage door, yeah. um, and then just that so that so he's able to hide but still see if he wants. He's able to you know he has a vantage point, has something where he can be higher up as well, so he can perch, and you know just just making yeah. sure that. Soft cover, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Soft bed. That was that was a good day, wasn't it? I think. Yeah, that was. Uh, it was. Uh, we had some. We had a lot of interesting days, but it was. Uh, I I had the cheek of always asking for uh, more money and for uh, at the whenever we were whenever lecturing in a larger group and and I passed the bike helmet around because that way nobody could put coin in it. They had to put bills in it. <laughs> 
<laughs> we, we had a lot of fun. That was a great achievement. I think, I think, I think, did, did we not go past twenty thousand pounds for cats protection on no, that? No, no, no. We did. We didn't go that high, but it was still. Did we not. It wasn't money. far off that. We did well. Yeah. Well, it wasn't far off that number. I'm fairly sure. So, uh, and and I think cats protection and and certainly myself are very grateful for uh, the efforts that you put in there to come well, over. Well, you, you, you and, I mean, Thames Medical um, uh, set up all of the uh, accommodation and, and um, you know, meals and all, so I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You still had to deliver that, and I'm very grateful for that. C Cats Protection and ISFM and, and, and all, all, all of the animal charities, I think, are going to have a really terrible time of it in a few months' time, when 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 people uh, are getting out of out of the jobs, they're getting made redundant. They are, or, or they're going back to work, or, or whatever happens, and they no longer need their pets. They get rid of them. All of these shelters are going to be inundated, and people aren't giving the money to these charities at the moment, are they? It's a real problem. People aren't going out to. Yeah. Uh, to the markets where the people will be shaking their tins and not going out to the fundraisers. They're not uh, going out to, to, to meet people, to discuss any of these charitable needs. And most charities are really having a terrible time of things at the moment. Yeah, charities are having a tough time of it. And, you know, so it, it, this is just a, a shift in, in awareness, just as we're wanting to do more um, uh, if we order in food if, if like, or, or, or get things up, we're buying more local to try and support, uh, uh, support uh, um, homegrown and like, rather than corporations. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's also almost, it's a time where almost you've got to th be thinking about tithing towards charities as so that, you know, 10% or whatever of your available money, because you're spending less on things. Sure. You've got less coming in, but you're spending less on things that, some of that mm -hmm. goes to charity. You know, if you've got five quid, five quid, you know, send it over, yeah. quid, send it over five quid but, yeah. to your favorite charity. One, you know, once a week, if you can do that, that's going to make a huge difference. It will make it. And, and, and you mentioned something else as well, just very briefly, which is the, the shop local. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Just, Keep them alive. Uh, we, we, your local restaurant, you know, and, and get takeout, you know, where you don't have to eat in. Um, that doesn't matter, but get takeout from your local restaurant. Yeah. yeah. Are, are you up for doing 60 second CPD, Margie? Yeah, I'm not quite sure what I can cover in 60 seconds. You know me, I can go on and on for fracking hours. But... <laughs> <laughs> so are, are you ready for 60 second CPD, Margie Sure. Well, let's give it a go. Let's this give is... it a go. And Ooh. here's 60 seconds CPD with Margie Sure. So this is a topic that, that uh, requires a lot more than 60 seconds, but if you're unfamiliar with the uh, five pillars for a healthy environment for cats, be it at home or in the clinic, but especially at home, they need to have a safe space. Cats are prey animals and therefore need to feel safe and secure, which is very difficult for them in a clinic setting. They need multiple and separated resource stations, meaning that they have uh, food in multiple places throughout the house. They have water in multiple places, um, uh, uh, multiple toileting areas, scratching areas, etc. Um, so because that's the way they uh, they eat small amounts frequently in nature, and they and, and emphasis on that frequently, and and then second emphasis on small. They have to be able to play and express predatory behaviors because they're hardwired to um, play or hardwired to hunt on an ongoing basis because they eat such small meals at, at uh, multiple oh, times. Uh, oh, well done. That's fantastic. Oh, I missed two of them. Oh, well, that's <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, we can, we can, we can ask you those in the questions, because there's, there's, um, there's a few seconds question time, I believe. So uh, if, if you say that those are the, the top three, what would, what would the other two be, Margie? The other two are <laughs> to have positive, consistent, and predictable interactions with people, meaning that they know that they get fed at a certain time, and we do that, and, and that we, because they want to have interactions with us, again, also small amounts infrequently, uh, that we interact with them, that we, 
pay attention to them because it's only going to be for a very short period of time that we give them that uh, in a positive way. And then that, that um, because cats have to, they smell is their most important sense. They need to be able to mark with their cheeks the, around the house um, uh, with their pads and scratching things and also marking with urine. And if we don't want them marking with urine in the house, which we don't, that we therefore um, uh, encourage them to mark with their cheeks and mark with their, with their pads. So again, you don't have to have a scratching pillar per se or some massive thing, which is nice if you've got, so they have ledges where they can perch and observe. But if you don't have it, you can also just have pieces of wood with carpet or sisal affixed to the wall in multiple places in the house, or especially if they're peeing, uh, you know, if they're spraying somewhere, if you put a scratching surface or another way for them to mark with their with their cheeks, you know, put in some um, uh, feline pheromone in those locations, plug it in if there's a plug in there, then um, that will really help them feel more at home. And that's now two and a half minutes. <laughs> no, no, you've got into questions on this. It's fantastic. I've got another couple of questions, actually, Margie, if I could, which is um, uh, something that we often see. So I'll start with the, the easier one first, I think, although it's not particularly easy, which is you mentioned a couple of times frequent small meals, because, of course, cats in, in the wild, uh, not that there are many cats in the wild these days, but cats in their recent evolutionary history will we'll eat mice and they may be lucky enough to get one or two mice a day a bit of a, bit of a lizard or a slow worm added to that and and we as humans tend to feed them uh two large sachets of food twice a day don't we or one one sachet of food twice a day and and that's not really what they need is it not at all cats so how need do we reconcile that how do we how do we feed them we, well, in fact, again, with the puzzle box, but also I'm just going to back out of this here for mm -hmm. a second. Yeah, I just want to actually show this. Um, get that out of there. Get that out of there. Close up nonsense that we don't need here. Um, you're, you're describing one of your lectures here, are you? No, I just wanted to. Yeah, that's right. I just wanted to share, you know, this is a, this is a really, you know, useful. Mm -hmm. Uh, thing, uh, feed, feline feeding behaviors, addressing behavioral needs to improve feline health. Well this is in the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery. Yeah, uh, that was 2018. Yeah. Okay, 2018. so this is the IAFP consensus statement, yeah? Yeah, and because it's AFP, it, 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 this is free, free, freely available to uh, everyone. And cats naturally prefer to eat small, frequent meals alone so they don't want to have you know this is why it's multiple and separated resource stations you don't want the bowls side by side right. um they should be probably you know unless the cats were raised together and people will say oh my cats eat beside each other all the time and it's fine they will because it's an essential resource but it's a source of stress for them hmm. so if you put you know in different rooms at least it's so that they're they have a, a good uh COVID space between them it's really you know one to three meters distance is what cats want between each other and using various toys, and there's all kinds of different things they can be bought or they can be homemade. Um, it, it, it's you know really uh, they don't have to cost anything to make these these toys. Um, and there's a really you know some a really good website which I want to find but also find for you. Food, so food, food puzzles, puzzles for cats I can see here. Puzzlesforcats.com, and this is a really nice uh, website because it's got you know the how to. Um, you know, teaching cats how to how to do this. Uh, there's stationary puzzles, rolling puzzles, wet food puzzles, homemade puzzles. Everything's got a video with it. And let's say, for instance, we go to stationary puzzles here now. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. They're graded as easy, medium, and hard. And how to then you know get teach your cat how to use puzzles. So this is you know a very very useful. Um, you know, mm. really, really useful website. And it's just because it's so very important for cats to have uh, the opportunity to eat whenever they want, but they have to work for their food. No free lunches, none of this just bowls. They need to actually work for it. Because if you think about how a cat um, hunts in nature, they're successful about one out of 15 times and they need about eight small meals a day. And so if that, that means hunting about, you know, 
at, you know, if you think that they're successful at 10, one out of 10 times, that could be 80 hunts a day, which means they spent their day thinking about, you know, strategizing and then tactics, of course, mm-hmm. change in the field. And there's, there, there, you know, there's the disappointment of failure and then you have to plan for the next one and the thrill of success and then in between making sure you don't become somebody else's meal so it's really uh you know cats really have to uh work hard at this um and uh it's a very stimulating environment as opposed to um as opposed to what we you know just keeping them in a house and providing them with safety warmth food endless food mm. water it's incredibly boring it really is is very similar to being in a velvet lined prison um because they're designed to hunt and to chase a leaf and to smell the wind and to do all of these things and so if we can't let them out we need to create an environment that supports who and what they are mm-hmm. and so and i guess the bottom line of this is we need to do this because we're seeing so many uh, obesity related problems in cats and so many stress related problems in cats. Stress many, related, yeah. And yeah, obesity they, being, a, like, a being associated with stress um, yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it, it really is all of these stress related problems. As I said, you know, the list of the list of uh, stress related problems is huge. And, and I think that there is a general um, reticence in the veterinary world to say to owners, the problem with your cat is that it is stressed and you're not enriching its environment enough. You're not giving it the right things it needs. It's more a case of it has colitis or it has a, a urine tract problem. We'll medicate it. Or yeah, it's stressed. Yeah, it's stressed. Let's we give it... I, 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 I see a lot of cats, as a second opinion, a lot of cats who the first opinion vet has started it on gabapentin or amitriptyline or... or right put lots of fatty way into uh right which is uh, at least better yeah but, uh, yeah which is better but 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 they're still they're still using some sort of soporific or or um or, or panis it is sort of imaginary over the cracks, isn't it? piping out over the cracks of the it is absolutely piping over the cracks and yeah well, well, exactly. it. it most definite most definitely is and for instance here when we look at the when we look at the increased risk for going outside, you know, we certainly have, they're very real. I'm not saying they're not mm-hmm. on the left-hand side, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, infectious disease, vehicular trauma, alt- alternate creative trauma, um, you know, falling, getting lost, being spo- stolen, mm-hmm. poison exposure, eating food that you don't want them to be eating, you know, that, you know, you uh, mm-hmm. know, the neighbor's cat's food that they get into pregnancy, you know, or hunting, you know, the, the like, but uh, increased risk from living indoors is much, look at all the different things there. And as far as the trauma, you still have, they can still get caught and strangled in blind cords and they can still fall. They could be electrocuted. They can be burned on the stove top. At least if I could, if we could just read some of those out, because so, some people don't have the, the, the video version of this, but, um, but there are increased risks from living indoors, such as, uh, number one, I think probably number one on your list for good reason there, lower urinary tract diseases, uh, feline interstitial cystitis, neurolithiasis, hyperthyroidism, boredom, inactivity, decreased fitness, obesity, diabetes, dental resorptive lesions. We'll get back to that in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Household hazards and poison exposure, secondhand smoke, traumas, problem behaviours, behaviour problems generally, and dermatological problems. And going back, so, so dental resorptive lesions. Now, most cats, we know as, as vets, you know, in, in inverted commas, we know as vets, most cats uh, will have the need for a dental procedure uh, above the age of about seven or eight. And a lot of those cats... Oh, we're seeing... whoa, whoa. above the age, well, actually three, three and on, like three, at, at th- age three, most cats already have periodontal disease. It, Okay, sure, sure, but but the the perceived wisdom is you know old, old, older cats. Okay, you're absolutely right, Mike. I don't mean to to to, to diminish yeah. your thing there, but the, the perceived wisdom is old, older cats all will need dentals, and most of those will have these things called dental resorptive lesions, little holes in the side of the teeth, which are incredibly painful, absolutely mm-hmm. horrifically painful, and owners often don't notice them and, and and that's not 
that's not to say they're missing things necessarily because actually most dentals I do on cats and I I, I, I know that we shouldn't call them dentals but, but we, we do make most dental procedures on cats we do and owners say a few days afterwards my goodness what have you done he or she seems so much happier so much more comfortable I didn't know that, that, that he or she was in pain before and it it's the silent attacker isn't it these these uh, dental resorptive lesions but we don't really uh, I suppose broadcast that actually indoor cats are much more prone to, to dental resorptive lesions than cats that go outside and it's it's something like is it five or six times more common it's well I, I, yeah, I don't know if we know that the, the the data but it uh, uh, but it certainly is more common and a lot of times people will say yes well it's the indoor cats who are more likely to be taken into the vet and therefore have these things seen but that's not true because when you're looking at we're not talking about cats who are feral we're talking about cats mm. comparing them to cats who are uh go indoors and out relative mm. to cats who are strictly indoors in fact but cats who have the opportunity to hunt are far less likely to have lower urinary tract diseases as well mm. and mm. so it it's the, the role of the role of, of stress and being able to they're no different than we are they want to be in control of their lives yeah. you know they want to be able to go to the shops or go to the pub or go to the whatever when they feel like it as opposed to being told they have to stay indoors all the time you know mm. and then starting to become destructive to themselves and you know as, as or we start to be being destructive and having um, mental health issues and, and the like this is the difference between problem behaviors and behavior problems. Problem mm. behaviors are normal cat-related things. Like cats spray to mark their territory. It's just we don't like it. Cats scratch to mark their territory, to shed their nail, the, their nail sheets for exercise, for a good old stretch. Um, but we don't like it when they do that. Um, aggression, perfectly normal, you know, under m most circumstances, <laughs> you know, leave me alone. Mm. But it's but it's we don't like those things, therefore they're problem behaviors. And we see a lot of cats for those things in in practice as opposed to true behavior problems where it's somebody is, you know, uh, picking at themselves endlessly, 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 because like obsessive behaviors, um, which are true behavior problems. But we don't see so many of those, I think possibly more in dogs than in cats. But, um, you know, beh problem behaviors are, are, are what we see. And, it, and we tend to, as you say, we tend to give them drugs hmm. rather than look at the underlying problem which is the environment you know let's let's deal with letting a cat be a cat and this this actually goes to uh the five freedoms the five freedoms yep. are you know freedom from hunger and thirst that's generally not a problem with our cats and dogs but we, we generally make sure they've got lots of plenty of food it may not be the best quality of food or it may not be the food that's best suited for them it may in fact be too much food um, uh, ready access to fresh water. We don't change their water often enough. It really needs to be fresh, just like we don't leave a glass of water most of the time sitting out and drink from it day after day for five days in a row. It'd be disgusting. And we'd wash our glass in between as well. Mm. Um, but so that's usually not such a big thing that, but freedom from discomfort by providing an appropriate environment, which gives them shelter and a comfortable resting area. Again, these were developed in the 60s for uh, food producing animals um, in, in the UK is where these originally sourced. But the appropriate environment, again, we're providing shelter and a comfortable resting area, but not giving them anything to do there. Mm -hmm. Freedom from pain, injury, and disease to prevent pain, injury, and disease or rapidly diagnose and treat it. Again, by and large, that's not so much of a concern with you know the indoor, indoor cat. Although we are seeing more visits during COVID because of the fact that people are now at home and noticing things more. Freedom to express normal behaviors, that's, I think, where we get into trouble, mm -hmm. providing sufficient space, proper facilities. And again, because this is for all species and it really doesn't apply to cats, you have company of con specifics. Mostly cats don't like having other cats around. They'd rather be, obviously, there There are some, you know, that's a whole other topic, but sufficient space and proper facilities, that means meeting environmental needs, behavioral needs, and freedom from fear and distress, ensuring conditions and treatment which avoid mental suffering. I think we really fall down on that, which is why I, as much as, as unpalatable as the idea is, I really think that the way we keep cats indoors, we have to focus on improving that because right now we're providing them with velvet lined prison cells. 
I think I think you're right. And again, just just to clarify, so this, these these five freedoms aren't just things you've come up with uh, of your own volition, your own sort of idle ramblings. Here, the the the, the five freedoms are a set of uh, of absolutely immutable needs that were decided upon by the uh, United Federation of Animal Welfare in the seventies, wasn't it? That these are things that actually every animal. Sixty-five. Yeah, here I'm just reading reading this here. The five freedoms outline five aspects of animal welfare under human control, developed in response to a 1965 UK government report yeah. Yeah. on livestock husbandry, were formalized in in 1979 press statement by the UK Farm Animal Welfare Council. The five freedoms have been adopted by professional groups, including veterinarians and organizations, including the World Organization for Animal Health, the RSPCA, and the um, American Society for, uh, the, and the American SPCA. And, and and here we have, I think, a fundamental problem, don't we? In that, uh, a lot of people will want a pet as a companion, and uh, those people may go out to work. And if they go out to work for the day, they think, well, I can't get a dog because a dog needs to be taken out during the day. I can't leave a dog for eight hours. I'll get a cat. And this myth has promulgated, if, if, if that's the correct word, to, yeah. to, 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 to say that actually I can, I can get a cat because I can, I can feed it in the morning. It'll sleep all day. It'll sleep all day. It'll be fine. It'll wander. It'll potter about. It'll go from sofa A to sofa B. Yeah. Uh, I can come back in the evening, give it a stroke, give it some more yeah. food, and it'll be cushy. Yeah, absolutely, pucker. Um, and and that's the huge problem, isn't it? There, there's this this big gap between what we want and need, and what the cat wants and needs. And but it's not that difficult, from what you're saying, to try and bring the two together. Right. So, so some people will, 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 will be able to do all of that by the simple expedient of cutting a hole in their wall and allowing a cat flap. Right, exactly. Uh, exactly. Others will need to do more. They'll need to get your Tupperwares and cut holes in it and actually do a bit more work to think, this is what I need, this is what I'm getting, this is my cat, this is, I love it, I, I really, really love it. But actually, what does the cat need? And they're going to put some work in then. Right. And, you know, and, and again, going back to what a, a, a cat needs um, here, these are, you know, the, the, the cat needs, but also here what, you know, if you think about what a cat, what are normal feline behaviors, and you focus on, on those, I mean, cats play a lot. And even though if people bring home lots of toys, that's fine, but they need the toys to move. And all, and they think, well, gosh, I spent all this money on this toy, and the cats, you know, played with it for you know, 30 seconds and has walked away, that was a waste of money. No, because it, it, in fact, cats only play with, play for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And again, if you think about cats, whether it's, whether it's eating, whether it's interacting with us, whether it's playing, it's small amounts frequently. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, really defi defines cats. And the fact that, so normal feline behaviors are play, investigation, observation and the reason they have to observe is so that they can stay safe because they are prey animals and they need to they, and their best way of protecting themselves is to be invisible is to is to predict the danger and get the heck out of there uh run away uh they need to hunt they need to feed they need to drink they need to scratch they need to travel uh they need to mark with scent be it their cheeks their their paws um you know their cheeks their their um uh, bodies uh, uh dorsal glands there, their, their mm. pads uh, or with urine, they need to eliminate, they need to rest and they need to sleep. So those are really the, the normal behaviors that we have to address. And that doesn't mean just putting stuff in, the, in a room mm. for them. I, I know one of, the, one of the big things that's come out in the last few years is, um, is the use of those little laser pointers to, to, mm -hmm. uh, to play with cats. Uh, and there are a lot of um, uh, controversies over that about um play and and gain uh, well, laser pointers are laser pointers are are great if you make sure that the cat kills something at the end kills quotation marks air quotation marks in that um if they need to finish on otherwise they're they they 
the belief is that they can feel frustrated. It's like hunting, hunting, hunting. And however, I would say that I'm not quite as worried about, about that. And this would be mark me down in a, negatively. In, well, in, well, you've already said that it takes about 80 interactions to it, get a good... Well, yeah, exactly. There's going to be one out of 10 times you'll be successful and the other nine times you won't be successful. So I think that that is, 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 is not necessarily a bad thing, but you do want to eventually, when you're bored with it, want to put it away, which happens after not too long, that you you, you finish the beam on a, on a few pieces of treats or finish the beam on a stuffed toy or something and then you turn it off so that they can kill or um you know quote unquote kill that stuffed toy um and uh and, and similarly you want to make sure like i've got the three cats i want to make sure that as i'm playing with the laser pointer that i keep it away from that one to three meter zone around the other cats so that it's not crossing into their territory and and i'm inducing um a, confrontation Co confrontation and, and, and confliction so um and, and this is uh I, I, i'm sort of dredging up memories from uh, from years back uh, about uh, i think called the gambling principle um right right exactly that's like playing slots you know you yeah. have to reward them every now and then to keep them doing it and that's also what torturers do it's you know it's torture is 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 that you will uh, you, if you every now and then get, uh, but it has to be intermittent. You have to make sure that it's uh, at a uh, like with gambling. You can't say, okay, every tenth time I'm going to win. Hmm. You know, it has to be unpredictable. And same thing, like unpredictable. At one point, the torturer will stop doing whatever. Um, it, you know, and, th and that'll keep you wanting to make that torturer happy, so that you know you win on that. Yeah, it's it's. So so we need to keep sort okay. of teach the cats a safe word, don't we? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A way to tap. That's out. a safe word. So, so tell me, Julian, have, we've had some amazing content this evening. Oh, it's incredible. It, it, it's, it's exceeded my, my thoughts, I as it, it always does. Without alcohol, damn it. I'm I working on Well, you can have later, Margie. That's the time difference, and that's one of the problems of, of transatlantic recording. But uh, you, you can raise a glass to us later. That's not a problem. Yeah. Time. But Julian, oh, hello, Jules, <laughs> holding holding cat up and giving Jules Ginger a big cuddle there with his with his. I, I like I like the fact that Margie has a cat called Jules. Yeah, I like that. Right. I like that Absolutely. a lot. So, have you got a CPD sticker for this evening? I have. Yeah, I have. And so now, I I, I usually try and match the CPD certificate up with um with who's um who's on, and the, the problem is. I've got a couple of cats, and I love them very, very much. And I got some pictures of them, but it didn't quite, you know, look, pictures of cats didn't quite gel with what we needed. So I've done food instead. Right on. And, and part, part, of my, part of my reason for choosing these pictures here is, is knowing that Mike has got this amazing fungus here. Food can differ. Food can be wonderful or it could be bad for us, and it can depend on, on different people. So I mentioned earlier, I can't eat uh, pumpkins. I can't eat butternut squash, uh, whereas for most people, they're delicious. But this is lentil soup in, in a homemade bread bowl. Now, lentil soup, I love lentil soup. I love bread. Lentil soup in a bread bowl, all edible for me, absolutely fine. But I made a butternut puree there because I made this for my wife and daughters. I can't eat that and make me vomit all night long. Uh, this may be delicious for other people. So I'm pointing at the other corner of the, uh, the certificate. Uh, this, this is bird nest soup. We saw this on sale in, um, uh, in, in Thailand. Now, none of us would ever consider eating bird's nests because of the harm it does to, 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 to the birds, uh, to, to the... Um, the ecology of, of those starlings. However, for some people, bird's nest uh, is a very important traditional Chinese medicine. I love eating fish. If I caught that fish, I wouldn't enjoy it. It's a weaver fish. It would hurt you. Some people love eating those fish. They're puffer fish. Fugu is the term in, uh, in mm -hmm. Japan. Mm -hmm. 
they're quite delicious actually when they're prepared properly if they're not they prepared are. properly you will die absolutely they're, they're amazing aren't they really yeah. delicious part of the deliciousness part of the taste is the thought that there's a certain gambling principle there uh, every year about 15 to 20 people die because fugu chefs have parked up and people uh, consume tetrodotoxin which is one of the top three uh, uh, greatest toxins to, to, to humans uh, here's here's a here's my own barbecue there we go what i've got on my own barbecue here i've got um, i've got a uh, risotto cooking there i've got chicken cooking there and i've got a dutch oven with a chicken cooking in there so it's all about food the bottom right uh locusts and mealworms in a in a market in thailand so basically all about food but what does it say cpd of yet another cpd session this this certifies that our dedicated followers have attentively attended and assertively ascended the ladder of learning. And I think that really says that we've just blitzed it in the learning field tonight. We've just, we've just blitzed it. We have. We've done, I we've think, it. We've a it. year of CPD in, in an hour. Absolutely. And... And a minute of CPD. In two in and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So in order to fulfill the requirements of the art CVS, and uh, for those veterinary listeners that we have in the UK, they need to fulfill those requirements. It mm -hmm. is a requirement that we, of course, reflect on the CPD that we have dutifully received this evening. So, Margie, would you join us in a moment's reflection? on a marvellous evening of CPD, please. Let's reflect. Fabulous. That's going to go in front of the RCVS committee and they're just going to approve that. And They'll love it. They'll love it. All of it. Any of our listeners will be able to uh, to enjoy and and fulfil their CPD requirements of continual professional development uh, simply by tuning in to veterinary ramblings. Julian, and I reckon have, it delights the whole year, doesn't it? Absolutely. Have you have you got a joke, Julian? I have. I have. Okay. As, as ever, there's been a choice. Um, Massive choice, I would hope. I, <laughs> I hope I don't have to bail you out this week like I had to last week. You might have to. You might okay, have. There we go. So, um, do we do we want to go for something religious, or do we want to go for something? Um, I was thinking feline. Uh, feline. I want a feline one. Oh, go on then. What, what, what are you going to go for? Then? I'll, I'll go for the food one because we, we we've concentrated on food this week. Uh, well, you have barely have we touched it. I, I like I like food. I'd die without it. I really would. Yeah, you probably would. So, and and this this is this is a true story about uh, a farmer visited about fifteen years ago when when I was uh, a mixed practice vet, and I, I went to this farm and, and and it was it was a pig farm, primarily that they had a few other species there, but mainly a pig farm. And there was one pig; it was yeah, about about sort of average size for a pig, Gloucester old spot, jolly nice, but it had a wooden leg. And I said to the the farmer, "What? Why is that pig got a wooden leg?" Yes, I'll tell you, that, that pig is the cleverest pig I had. Yeah, okay, it's fair enough, but why has it got a wooden leg? No, 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 no I haven't finished. Uh, that pig is bloody brilliant. That pig drives a tractor. I was like, you kidding? Oh, yeah, yeah, drives a tractor. Honestly, I'll show you some of the fields he ploughed later. He's fantastic. Not only that, but he babysits my children when I'm out. You're kidding? No, no, he does. He does. He, baby, he, he babysits for them. He looks after them all night. And the oldest one, nine years old, plays Scrabble with them. He's pig. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he beats them almost consistently every time. You're kidding? A, a three-legged pig? Yeah, he does that. He does that. So why has he even got three legs? Oh no, 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 no. And 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 he's my secretary. So what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need a secretary. He types very slowly because he's only got you know two, two digits, but he types for me. 
Jesus, that's, that's amazing. That's absolutely incredible. But, but why has he only got three legs? What's happened there? Is it more? Well, pig like that, you don't eat all at once, do you? Fantastic, yes. I got a grim raising. That's all I ever do. Got a grim raising. All right, I've, I've got one for you then. So oh, yeah. Why, yeah. Are, why are cats so good at video games? Do they? They've got nine lives. <laughs> <laughs> on, on that note, on that note, on that bombshell. Margie Shirk, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. We thoroughly enjoyed what you brought to the veterinary ramblings and remember if you if you like what we give you please tick like follow support us if you're looking at really getting involved and supporting us tell us what you want more of and we'll provide that for you so veterinary ramblings margie shirk thank you very much indeed and i feel it's a, it's a little bit it's a little bit wrong really but May your dog go with you. May uh, may your dog go with you. Or in this case, dare we say, may your cat go with you. Yeah, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't sort of work. spoils the pun, really, doesn't it? It does. It does. No, may your dog. May your dog go with you. May your dog go with you. Indeed. Good night, Margie Sherwood. Sure. Thank you Cheers. very much indeed. Thank you so much. We say good night. It's about what one o'clock in the afternoon there, or uh, two it's or three or three eighteen in the afternoon. Three eighteen. There we go. <laughs> hey, Margie, thank you so much. Hey, Margie, much. thank you so Pleasure. much. Did you, have you enjoyed yourself? Yes. You, d- you didn't think you would, did you? He says through gritted teeth. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. I, and once again, I found a mountain. Drag me out again. Uh, we, 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 never, we never know where these uh, ramblings are going to go to. Hence the ramblings. Hence the ramblings. And hence the ramblings. ramblings. And, but you know, I was um, blown away by your cat behaviour stuff. Yeah. And it's it's so it's so important and so misunderstood in this country. 